So let's compare these two alkenes. And even though they look similar to each other, they're actually different compounds. The reason they're different molecules is because of the double bond. We know that double bonds do not have any free rotation about them. So these are two different stereoisomers of each other. So no free rotation around the double bond means the molecule on the left cannot rotate to look like the molecule on the right. Let's see if we can name these two molecules. So if I started with this as carbon 1, and then this would be carbon 2, 3, and 4. A 4 carbon alkene, so that would be butene. And the double bond starts at carbon 2, so it would be 2-butene, like that. Over here on the right, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So a 4-carbon alkene with a double bond starting at 2, this would also be 2-butene. But we need a way to distinguish between these two molecules, because we know they're different. They're stereoisomers of each other. And there are two systems that you could use to distinguish between these two. The first system that we'll use is the cis-trans system. So when you're using the cis-trans system, you look for two identical groups. So if I look at this methyl group here, and I know, notice there's a methyl group over here. And I can see, if I extend this double bond, I can see my two identical groups are on the same side. And we call that cis. So cis-2-butene is the molecule on the left. The two identical groups are on the same side of the double bond. On the right, we have a methyl group over here and another methyl group over here. And if we look at the position of the double bond, we can see that our two identical groups are across from each other. They're on opposite sides. So we use the word trans to describe that situation. So this is trans to butene on the right. Trans means across. So if you take a transatlantic flight, you're taking a flight across the Atlantic. Which of these two stereoisomers is more stable? Well, when you think about steric hindrance, and you think about how bulky a methyl group is, you want to keep bulky groups as far away from each other as they possibly can. So this methyl group over here, when it's across from this methyl group, it's much further away than if it's on the same side as in the situation on the left here. So the molecule on the right is actually more stable. So this is actually more stable. Trans-2-butene is, is more stable than cis-2-butene, and the reason is decreased steric hindrance. All right, let's do another example of the cis-trans system. So if I were to look at, let's say, a double bond like this, and I want to figure out whether this molecule is cis or trans, I would need to look for two identical groups. And I have this isopropyl group here and this methyl group here, so those are not two identical groups. I could use hydrogens, though. So I know there's a hydrogen here. And I know there's a hydrogen here, so, so those are the same thing. So I can think about those two groups in relation to each other. And once I go ahead and draw my, my double bond line in here, I can see those two hydrogens are on opposite sides. So this would be the trans stereoisomer for this molecule. So you can, uh, you can sometimes use the cis-trans system. Sometimes you can't use the cis-trans system. And so there's another system that can be used at any time. Um, and it's called the EZ system. So let's go ahead and talk about the EZ system. All right, so let's look at let's look at a molecule here. And when we look at the stereochemistry of the double bond for this molecule, in the EZ system, everything is based on highest priority, based on atomic number. So we're going to look at the atoms connected to our double bond, and we're going to assign priority based on atomic number. So if I look at the carbon on the left, I'm going to look at the atom directly bonded to that carbon. So I have a bromine bonded to that carbon, and I have a carbon bonded to that carbon. So if I'm thinking about bromine's atomic number versus carbon's, obviously bromine has a higher atomic number, so that gets a number one. And carbon having a lower atomic number gives this substituent a lower priority, so this would be a number two. So we have higher priority gets a one, and lower priority gets a number two. Over here on the right, what's bonded to the carbon on the right? Well, there's a hydrogen over here, and there's an oxygen. And we know that oxygen has a higher atomic number than than, than hydrogen. So this oxygen down here would get a number one, and this hydrogen would get a number two. We use our same trick that we did before. We kind of extend this double bond here, so it's easier to see uh, which sides our highest priority groups are on. So in this case, 
our two highest priority groups, we have a number one over here, which is the bromine, and then we have a number one over here, which is the OCH3. So our two highest priority groups are on opposite sides from each other, opposite sides of the double bond. So we call this the E stereoisomer. So this is E, which comes from the German word entgegen. So let's go ahead and write entgegen, which means opposite. So the two highest priority groups on, the op on opposite sides of the double bond is E. Let's go ahead and switch that up again. All right, so let's switch it up. This, this time, let's put the methyl group up here, and let's put the bromine down here. And we'll keep this side exactly the same. So an H and then an O, C, H, 3, like that. All right, so assign priority. Well, we know that bromine is a higher priority than carbon, so this is highest priority had the highest priority substituent, so this gets a number one, and the methyl group is going to get a number two. Over here, we already know that this is going to get a number one, and the hydrogen is going to get a number two. So this time, when we look at our two highest priority groups, and we look at the double bond, we can see that our two highest priority groups are on the same side of the double bond. And this is called the Z, this is the Z stereoisomer. So this is Z, which comes from the German word zusammen, so let's see if I can spell it here, which means together. So when your two highest priority groups are together or on the same side, it is Z. The way to remember this is to think to yourself, Z, same, side. And if your two highest priority groups are on Z, same, side, you know you're dealing, dealing with the Z stereoisomer. Let's do another example of the EZ system. So this example will be just a little bit harder. So let's look at our double bond here. So here's our double bond. And here's our bromine. Here is our chlorine. And let's put an aldehyde in here. And then let's make this an alcohol. So CH2OH. So assign an E or a Z to this molecule. So once again, we start with the carbon on the left, and we look at the bromine compared to the chlorine. So we know that bromine has a higher atomic number than chlorine, so bromine gets highest priority, chlorine gets lowest priority. Over here on the right, uh, we have a carbon and a carbon. So that's a tie. So obviously we need to keep going. We need to find the first point of difference rule. And so the easiest thing to do for something like this is to go ahead and draw the molecule out a little bit, expand it a little bit. So attach this carbon. This is the carbon on one end of our double bond. This is our carbonyl carbon. So this is the carbon double bonded to an oxygen. And the easiest thing to do is, is to pretend like that carbon is bonded to two different oxygens, even though it's actually only bonded to one. So we've seen this little trick before. And then this is a hydrogen here. And then down here, we have a carbon bonded to two hydrogens, right? And then bonded to an O. And then this oxygen is also bonded to a hydrogen. But let's go ahead and assign priority now. So this is, again, this is the carbon at, on the right side of our double bond. And then this carbon at the top here, we had a tie between these two carbons. So we go to the, the next one. Right, the next atoms that are bonded to this atom. So that would be oxygen, oxygen, hydrogen. So oxygen, oxygen, hydrogen for the top one. For the bottom one, it would be oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen. So oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen for the bottom one there. I'm comparing oxygen to oxygen. Right, so that's a tie, so I need to keep going. First point of difference, oxygen versus hydrogen. Oxygen has a higher atomic number, so of course this would get the higher priority. So I go back over here to the molecule on the left, and I say my aldehyde ends up getting a higher priority than my alcohol, like that. So now I go ahead and put my double bond in there like that, and I think to myself, where are my two highest priority substituents? My two highest priority groups, Let's see, this one and this one, well, they're on the same side. So this must be the Z stereoisomer for this molecule. So the EZ system works for any double bond. The cis-trans system is somewhat limited. And so you'll see some people don't really like the cis-trans system um, and prefer using the EZ system all the time. But for historical reasons, cis and trans still come up a lot in organic chemistry textbooks.